Hello all, Shoestring here. Last video we discussed the maintenance that's required for a flood acid battery, but today we're going to talk about the maintenance that's necessary for an AGM battery. Yes, maintenance for a maintenance free battery, and we're going to talk about it. It's true AGM batteries require less maintenance than the flooded acid batteries do, but it's simply not true that they're maintenance free. There are some important tips you have to take to keep your battery happy and working. And we're going to talk about some of those. So let's talk about the first tip, which is keep your battery charged. That's one of the most important things you have to do with these batteries. Flood acid as well. These batteries are important. So if you have a regular battery, this is just a small 35 amp hour battery I got from Harbor Freight. You want to check the voltage on it. Best way to do that is, of course, with a multimeter. This is also one I got from Harbor Freight. I'm pretty sure it came from Harbor Freight. Anyway, we're going to turn it on. We're going to take red to red and black to black. And it's at 13.0. Hopefully you can see that. 13.0. So it's charged up and ready to go, but we still want to make sure... It's all the way charged before we use it or before we store it. And one of the main ways to do that, of course, is with a battery charger. This is also from Harbor Freight. Today it appears we're going to just do a Harbor Freight day. If you look down, most battery chargers will have a switch that will say either AGM or regular. In this case, we're doing AGM, so make sure your battery says that. And we're going to have it at trickle charge. Trickle charge because the battery is already charged, but we want to get it just as high up as we possibly can. All batteries will go much higher when you're initially charging them, then they'll drop back down. So check the documentation on your battery and make sure that you're getting the correct amount of charge when you're charging it up. Okay, so as you saw, the battery was 13.1 and fully charged. Put the red on and put the black on. And you can see, hopefully you can see, the light has come on. The trickle charge light has come on. So even though it's 100% charged at 13.1, to get it fully charged so we can store it, or have the maximum amount of power when we're ready to use it, is we want to hook it up and bring it all the way up to 14.9, even 15.0, depending on what your battery is. But of course, you'll want to read the instructions on your battery and look at what the manufacturer says. But I wanted to show you that even with the battery being fully charged, it will still take a little more. That's why we do it once a month. The other way, of course, is connect it to your solar. Here is a regular charge controller, right? And you also hook it up to the battery and the solar panels, and it will charge it. Either way you're going to do it, you want to make sure you keep the battery charged all the way up, okay? Now that we have the battery charged all the way up, we want to talk about depth of discharge. It's important that your depth of discharge doesn't go down too low okay so and you are looking at the chart here it's a hundred percent at between 12.7 and 13.2 which is why I said at 13.1 this one was fully charged okay you go down the chart you can see 12.4 is 75 12.2 is 50 and shoestring always says stop at 12.1 if your battery gets to 12.1, you stop using it, unless, of course, it's an emergency, but generally you stop using it and charge it back up, because anything below that, 12.0, is going to be 25%, and, of course, 11.8 is totally discharged, at which case you will destroy the battery, and we don't want to do that. Okay, so... Overcharging also can kill a battery, which is why you want to make sure you have a charge controller on these. Don't charge it up straight from the solar panels. You could very well damage your battery. And these things are way too expensive 
to do that. Okay, that's our first tip, is to keep the battery charged. Second tip is keep the battery clean. You want to keep your connections on rust free. You want to make sure it's nice and clean and you want to make sure your battery's always in good condition. So check it out and make sure it's okay. Also, even though these are sealed, our next tip is keep these ventilated. Now, not as bad as flood acid. You don't have to keep it ventilated all the time. In fact, these can even come in the house. But you have to make sure that they're nice and clean and your battery connections are tight. If you're going to use screws, make sure they're really tight. Or you can use what most people do, which is standard clamps, which also very easy put on nice and tight. So keep the battery clean, keep your connections nice and tight. And ventilation, make sure, especially when you're charging it up. So while the AGM batteries release substantially less gas during use, the emissions are not completely zero. You want it someplace where it will ventilate. Our last tip is going to be about storing your AGM battery. AGM batteries are designed to hold their charge, unlike flooded batteries that has to be charged all the time. Sometimes these will hold their charge for months, even while not in use and stored on a shelf, but they don't hold it indefinitely. So an important part of your maintenance is to check the battery state of charge on a regular basis. Shoestring recommends a monthly check and charge to make sure the battery remains fully charged. And you can use it on an instant notice. Remember, the power company is not going to send you a 24-hour notice that you'll be losing power in a storm. So you can run and charge your battery up. This isn't going to happen that way. So you want to keep your batteries ready to go where you can respond at any time. Storing your AGM battery in a hot environment also shortens its life. So try to put it somewhere in a cool environment. <coughs> AGM batteries prefer that. And yes, AGM batteries can be moved. If you need to store them on their side, you can. That's not going to be a problem. So these AGM batteries are substantially less maintenance than the flood, but you also need to look after them. Following these simple tips, and your AGM battery will give you many years of service. If you have any questions, because I, of course, not covered everything, please put comments down. Shoestring likes comment. So if you like these type of videos and they're helpful, please, of course, subscribe, click that notification button, and like. Shoestring out.